to actually get more clients, you need to know what you're doing. It's going to be impossible for you to sell something when if somebody asks you, what's the average CPL in this niche? You have no clue what's happening, okay? You need a base understanding of what your service delivery is before you can get any clients. And when you do get clients, you need to actually know how to deliver a valuable service that's worth the money that you're asking for. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do your service delivery. There's gonna be stuff in here that you've never heard about before. This isn't gonna be like any other normal service delivery training. I'm gonna show you some really crazy tactics, okay? Not gonna waste any more of your time, let's get straight into it. Okay, so there's three main points. Number one is a precursor to everything, and it's just that you can't have operational drag, okay? You need to have one service system. That doesn't mean you have to limit yourself to just one service, like for example, just Facebook ads. But what you do need to do is limit yourself to one service system, okay? So that means you can't do Facebook ads and lead nurturing, and then also do web design, and then also do code outreach for them, right? You need to stick to one service and one service system and actually do it properly, okay? So I'll show you what this means. So let's say, for example, you know, I'll just show you what I did in the gym niche. So I was doing Facebook ads, right? And then I went to lead nurturing. So like on go high level, I would like help them. I would, I would do everything that was done for you. I would do the ads to them and then I'll get the leads to show up, right? So that's kind of like the whole done for you service that I did. And then towards the end, I also added like um, some stuff on sales where I would like kind of help them close clients that did show up, right? So as you can see, this is like one system. Like it's not, it's not like it's, it's Google plus Facebook ads going into this, right? It's just one consistent like linear system, right? So what two service delivery systems would look like is let's say like, you're already doing this. You're doing the Facebook ads, so the lead nurturing to the sales. That's one service system. And then you also decide to do inbound where you're helping them post content and you're helping them do inbound DMs to book appointments. And then maybe like you funnel them into the same sales thing here, right? That's two different systems. That's not going to work, okay? You need to have one system because when you have one system, it removes a lot of the operational drag so it's a lot easier to scale. Like just scaling, if you're only doing something like this, and you scale with it, it's going to be a lot more simple to scale compared to doing something like this and this, right? You can just do this, or you could just do this. Both of them on their own would work, but doing both of them won't work. Obviously, there are caveats. Like, there are agencies that are very big that do a lot of services. The reason that they can do a lot of services is because they have a massive team, and that massive team can facilitate the operational drag that they have to incur by doing multiple service systems. You right now, you're probably just starting out. You just do one service system, okay? So that's the first thing is you cannot have that, that, that massive level of operational track, okay? So the second thing is that everyone's service is going to be a little bit different. There's no one training, right? Just service delivery for SMA could mean literally hundreds of different things. SMA is such a broad term. Service delivery could be Facebook ads. It could be Google ads, YouTube ads, LinkedIn ads. It could be SEO. It could be content creation. It could be doing cold outbound for somebody. There's so many different things that you could be doing, right? So what this means is that for you, it's going to be a constant learning curve, okay? And a lot of your learning is going to come from like learning from videos like this, but the majority of it is going to come from experience. So it's going to come from actually signing the client, right? You come on with a base level knowledge and you understand some first principles and maybe you've done like a, some mentorship with someone in your niche, that's great. You have like a kind of an understanding of what to do, but the way you're going to actually know what to do and know how to get client results is to do it yourself, okay? And the only way to do that is to sign clients. So don't use not knowing service delivery as an excuse not to set and close appointments, okay? You need to be setting appointments, you need to be closing appointments. That is the lifeline of, of the whole agency. And you can tell how important it is because it's we're in a service delivery video and I'm telling you to book more appointments, okay? Because ultimately, that's what you're gonna need to do to actually learn and understand your service delivery. Okay, so number one is operational drag. Just have one service system. Number two, is like there's no one training for you it's you have to keep on learning one video me making like a like a full one hour guide on service delivery isn't going to help you because it, i can't do a one hour guide in every niche for every service that would take me like my entire life right so that's the first thing and although i do say that there is going to be some first principles that are true no matter your niche no matter your service okay and this is this part here number three emotionless scientific method no matter what service you're doing no matter what, like you, if you're doing Facebook ads, you're doing SEO, you're doing you're doing content creation, you're doing cold outbound. No matter what it is, you're going to use this. And this this is the framework. This this is the actual service delivery training that you need. And like it's something they should be using no matter what. It is emotionless scientific method. So so as 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 it states, using the scientific method without emotion. Okay. So what we have here, this will be in the description under the links to sell you stuff. It's kind of like um the scientific method but agency specific, okay? 
So first of all, let's kind of go over the method. There's seven big steps and we're going to use, um, obviously this isn't AG specific, but we're going to use the example of peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Okay. So let's just get into it. How do we actually go about finding working stimuli? And so stimuli is just like stuff that elicits actions, right? So for example, a Facebook, a Facebook ad would be a stimuli because it elicits the action of clicking on the ad, right? So how do we find working stimuli and see what traits work in your niche? We use the scientific method. Every stimulus I've personally come up with has been through using the scientific method to iterate and test new variables, okay? So what the scientific method is, is, you know, if you want to be a nerd about it, it's a process of experimentation to find accurate conclusions. That's all we need to do, and it's broken down in seven steps. Step one, I'm eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches daily, but they're soggy. Why are my peanut butter jelly sandwiches soggy? Right, that's the that's that's step one. Obviously, not not SMMA, but this is like a very simple example for you to understand that, that you can then use for any any niche, any you know agency, whatever happens to be. Okay, step two: research, look around for possible solutions. Looking online, I found out that it could be because I have peanut butter on one side and jelly on the other side, as opposed to peanut butter on both sides and jelly in the middle. Step three: hypothesis, which is a proposed explanation of the question. Right, so this is a if then because statement. So you know, if any if anybody watched the other ones out seven years ago, that's that's how I learned that. Maybe that's how, how you learned that too. Okay, so if I put peanut butter on both sides, so if here we have the if if I put peanut butter yeah if I put peanut butter on both sides of the sandwich and jelly in the middle, then if the then my sandwich won't be wet because the peanut butter will protect the bread from becoming damp, obviously from the jelly. Right. So when you're making your hypothesis, you should be focusing like this. If blank, then blank, because blank. That's how it should be, okay? Step four, experiment. So for the next week, I will make my sandwiches in accordance with my hypothesis, which is obviously putting peanut gel, peanut butter, peanut butter, yeah, which is obviously putting peanut butter on the outside and jelly in the middle. I'm going to do that for a week. And which is obviously putting peanut butter on the outside and jelly in the middle. So they're going to do that for a week in accordance with the hypothesis and see what happens, right? Very simple. Step five, conclusion. So obviously, you know, what happened? After doing my experiment for a week, I found that I was indeed correct with my hypothesis and my sandwiches are no longer soggy, right? That's awesome. <laughs> Step six, communicate. So just like very simple, just like clearly define the result. Obviously, you're kind of doing that in the conclusion, but this is just like making it clear. So, so pre-implementing the new method, it was always soggy and post, never soggy. So this like kind of concludes that, okay, yeah, it definitely did work, okay? Seven, repeat, the most important step, okay? So keep iterating. So what we have now is v we, ha we had a V1 where the, the peanut butter jelly sandwich is soggy. We now have a, a V2 peanut butter jelly sandwich where it's not soggy anymore. But we don't want to just end at V2. We want to keep on making the sandwich better. So we want to get V3, V4, V5, keep on testing new things, right? So maybe the, the white bread has folic acid. Anybody who watches Gary Bracker will know. And makes me inflamed. So for the next week, I'll eat my peanut butter jellies with non-folic acid bread and see if this makes me feel better. And then obviously that'll be your V3. And then, you know, if it does work, that's your V3. Then you're going to make your V4, your V5. And then eventually, if you keep on doing this, you have a V100 ultimate sandwich, okay? So that's what it looks like at a high, like a high level. But let's actually break down step by step, like a, like autistic level detail, how you can use it for your agency, okay? So this is what it looks like right here. So step one, observe plus question. So... Very simple, observe and define. So like what's actually happening, you know, it, it, your peanut butter sandwiches are, are soggy. Maybe it's like your ads aren't converting. Maybe it's you have like a 0.2% a appointment booking rate in the cold DMs, whatever happens to be, right? And by the way, this isn't just for service delivery. You can use this for any aspect. If you think about it, for the majority of you, all service delivery is, is client acquisition for your clients. So client acquisition, it's gonna, it doesn't matter if you're doing cold DMs or content or ads or whatever, Client acquisition is going to work the same for you as it is for your clients. So you can use this for you and for your clients. It's kind of like a cheat code. Okay. Observe and define and ask a question. So like, why is my, why is my cold DM rate shit? Why are my ads not converting? Okay. Step two is research. 2.1 is, you know, this is, this is from the program. So obviously you can't do the, the Olympus research because you're not, you're not in Olympus. It's not even out yet. And then 2.2 is outside research. So this is kind of all you can do. Look around, go to Discord servers around the agency space, go to school communities in the agency space, look up YouTube videos, just do your research, right? Maybe spend like 
five hours researching and trying to figure out the why, okay? And then step three, hypothesis. So what we're doing here is to define the key variables. So what specifically about the ad are we gonna be testing? Then we're gonna do our, our hypothesis, the if then because statement, and then we're gonna define the important metrics and KPIs. So what metrics and KPIs are we gonna be looking out for, for our test? And then we're gonna define the sample and the sample time frame. So maybe it's gonna be, you know, my code DMs are shit, so I'm gonna change the first, like the first one, because I can I can tell right now that my initial reply rate sucks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change the the key variable of the first message, okay? I'm gonna define the important metric and KPI. It's obviously the reply rate to the first message. Define sample and sample time frame. I'm gonna say 150 DMs, and I'm gonna give it a week because obviously you have to wait for latency to occur because people do, people aren't gonna respond instantly, okay? Define negative influences. So what could go wrong? Maybe 70 DMs in, I get discouraged and I think to change it, right? So just kind of be aware of what could go wrong. Create new stimuli. So actually go about creating, you know, the um the new piece of copy and then define variables. So it's like what actually makes up that new piece of copy, right? You have like the, the you have like the, the question, you have the hook, the CTA, all, all the different parts of parts of the new copy, right? Step four, experiment. This is, it's very simple, it's only two steps, but this is the most important part where everybody fucks up. All you have to do is run the test and log data, nothing else, okay? There should be another step in here, that's like kind of, for the whole of, of step stage four, do nothing. All you're doing is running the test and logging the data, right? You don't wanna run the test and then you, you realize that you realize you, you fucked up somewhere, so you're gonna change something. Don't change anything, just, do the sample amount over the sample time frame. Let latency occur. Log the data properly. You know, make sure you check and that the the that the data is logged properly, and just run the test. That's all you have to do. Okay. And then obviously, after the test, step five is conclusion. So I call this the two fifty. All it is is just you're just writing. Just like kind of journal about it a bit. Write two hundred and fifty words about what happened. Okay. Very simple. And step six, communicate. So what were the metrics with the new variables? and validate the metrics. So go back th through and make sure that you track all the metrics properly. Nobody does this. It'll take you like a few hours and it's gonna be so important because your metrics are like like your, your lifeline. It's kind of like sales, like you need it. If you don't know what your metrics are and you, your metrics aren't like actually like valid, if they're, if they're incorrect, you're making decisions incorrectly, okay? Make sure all your metrics are perfect. And then step seven, as it was with the peanut butter jellies, repeat, okay? So now you, you, you went from V1 to V2, you have a new opener, now, maybe something else is a bottleneck. Maybe you realize now that your Calendly send rate to appointment book rate is shit. So maybe you're gonna change the questions in the Calendly, or maybe you're gonna change your follow-up process, you're gonna add more follow-ups, whatever it happens to be, okay? So obviously, I've just given you an example with code outbound. You can do the exact same thing with, with ads. You can do the exact same thing with SEO, with content creation, with lead nurturing. This is the thing I, want, I, want, I, want, I really wanna ingrain in your head. It doesn't matter it, like, it doesn't matter if I gave you specific Facebook ad training or Google ads training, YouTube ads training, lead nurturing training, none of that matters. What matters is emotionless testing, okay? Uh, across any service, across any service delivery, all you're gonna do is test emotionlessly. And that's how you're gonna get the best results, okay? So I, ho I hope you found this valuable. If you did, obviously, you know, do, do the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe. There's a link, first thing in the description is, is trying to sell you something. Click, click it if you want to, I don't really care. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye-bye.